Welcome back to the ranking of Naruto games! Last time around we ranked the two games that started the huge battle of Naruto rights. With Ultimate Ninja and Clash of Ninja, both games had huge shortcomings and ended up with pretty low spots on our list. Today, we're gonna talk about three more games. Three games that were the first steps towards the Naruto open world game that never truly happened. One of the biggest fantasies of Naruto fans all over the world is to be able to roam around Konoha and the surrounding neighborhood to visit their favorite places from the show and interact with their favorite characters. From an action-adventure format all the way to something more akin to a real open world RPG, these were Naruto's first steps into the open world genre. Brought to you by Ridge. Ridge is changing the way you carry cash and cards with their flagship Ridge wallet. Get rid of those bulky fabric wallets, replace them with a sleek design of the Ridge. You don't need those old receipts, you don't need those old hotel keys. This wallet carries everything that you need. It's got a place for cards, it's got a money clip for money on the back, you don't need anything else. It comes in many different styles, made from military-grade materials like titanium or carbon fiber, and with Father's Day just around the corner, there's no better gift than a brand new Ridge wallet. Because this wallet is for life. It's not like those fabric wallets laying on the ground. Those wear out over time. This thing comes with a lifetime guarantee. And if you enter promo code GLOBQ10 at checkout, you can get a 10 percent discount along with free shipping and free returns with a money-back guarantee if you want to return the wallet within 45 days. Thank you, Ridge, for sponsoring this video. First game, Uzumaki Chronicles. This is the very first attempt at creating an environment that you could actually explore in Naruto. Not exactly an open world yet, but a game that gave you semi-open areas for you to fight in and explore. You start on Konoha, go to the Okage's office and accept a mission. Then you select the area you want to go to to complete that mission. And along the way, you might be attacked, which leads to fighting in these open areas which are actually quite varied. Some missions will be more than fighting though, there will be some light puzzles, some light platforming, even some light exploration. But the focus is definitely the combat, and the combat system isn't bad. There's enough freedom for you to create your own combos with light and strong attacks as well as different jutsu like the iconic Power Strike. Yeah, the Rasengan is called Power Strike for some reason. However, this is a baby game for babies, and you can just beat it by doing the Power Strike over and over again and not even engage with the combat system if you don't want to. The entire story in this game is made up, in fact, for most of the game, there's no connected storyline, each mission behaves as its own mini story. But despite Naruto's fandom very justified hatred for filler, the stories in this game are so bad they become good. <laughs> To me, these stories were hilarious, and part of that is also due to how the voice actors were delivering each line. You'll just have to ask one of the thieves. How? Lure one of them in and capture him. But, for as fun as these cutscenes are, missions often follow the same structure, so the game becomes quite repetitive really fast. Especially since most of the missions feel like filler. I mean, filler within filler. A new level of filler. This game is also a rather unique RPG. After each fight, the orbs that enemies drop are actually the XP that you must pick up manually. Which is frustrating because sometimes it just falls down a hole. But at the same time, it's pretty fun because there's this whole chip system where you can buy chips that can buff your character in different ways, or straight up give you some new moves, and then you have to to fit them into these boards, fitting as many as you can into them, which is kind of satisfying when you finally fill them up. However, to play and enjoy this game, you have to put up with some pretty annoying stuff. First of all, the camera is inverted and there's no option to change it, which makes the exploration portions of this game really frustrating if you're not used to that. It's also an old school game in terms of save systems. If you die, there's no autosave. There are no checkpoints. You have to go back to your previous save. And you can only save while you're in Konoha. So I guess if you die mid-mission, you have to replay the whole thing again. Luckily, you can pause during battle and just use as many healing items as you can, though. I don't know, this kind of feels like cheating sometimes. Also, you can't block in combat, but enemies can, which is weird and feels unfair sometimes. And finally, graphics. I have no problem with old graphics, but I'm personally not a big fan of the style itself. It feels like they went for a more realistic approach. In a way, this feels like the precursor to Jump Force, in terms of how it looks. In conclusion, this game kept me very entertained with the funny voice acting and the funny stories, and the chip system was actually very engaging. Decent combat though, even though you can also circumvent it by just spamming jutsu. And eventually I became really tired of playing it because of the repetitive mission design, I never got over the inverted camera and the other outdated mechanics this game has. So we're gonna put it right there at D rank above Clash of Ninja, which if you remember last episode, Clash of Ninja was very thin as far as content goes, but had a solid fighting system. But that makes Uzumaki Chronicles the new best Naruto game of all time. For now, let's check out the next game. Uzumaki 
Kentucky Chronicles was nothing but the very first step towards an open world, but was still very far from being the exploration game that Naruto fans wanted. But this next game is what I would consider the reason why Bandai Namco is the company that releases Naruto games nowadays instead of their competition. It's time to talk about Ultimate Ninja 2, the sequel to what's currently our worst Naruto game of all time. This game went above and beyond to improve over the first one, especially in story mode where for the first time you could actually walk around and explore Konoha in a 3D video game. You could accept missions and meet those characters at specific locations to start them and everything, I mean everything, was voice acted. From main missions to side missions, even random NPCs just standing around were voice acted. And they all had interesting or funny things to say. Huh, there's a rock in my shoe. Okay, Asuma, I'm just gonna go in here. You can play through the Naruto story complete with cutscenes and when you're done, there's a whole other original story giving this game a good amount of content. I mean, you can just beat both stories in about five hours, but there are still a ton of missions outside of that. And many of these are quite interesting. For instance, the Taijutsu challenge, where you must win the battle against Might Guy without using any ninjutsu. Or don't receive a single hit from your opponent. Or just mess around playing some posing mini games or handstand races. The roster was also increased dramatically and and there is a good attention to the source material here, because now everyone gets a special effect after activating their ultimates, and they stayed very faithful to the show. Kakashi and Sasuke, for instance, they activate the Sharingan and are now able to use Jutsu from your opponent, copying their entire moveset. The third Okage starts losing health rapidly after using the Death Seal, and Itachi turns the entire world into Tsukuyomi, making your opponent move in very slow motion. From Ultimate Ninja to Ultimate Ninja 2, there were so many improvements made, but the core gameplay is still mostly a party game. It was polished, there were a lot of good improvements, like they increased the number of items that can spawn exponentially. The gameplay felt more varied because there were more items, and it doesn't feel nearly as clunky. But for instance, you throw Itachi's ultimate, the opponent blocks, you can still grab your opponents before they're able to do anything. It's one of those games that asks frame data? <laughs> What's that? This leads to a very unbalanced roster in favor of fan service. And that becomes very clear when you look at the ultimates. The ultimates are even longer than before. They still take half of your health bar if they land, which just promotes this dumb mashy playstyle. But the worst part of it is the substitution jutsu, because now you can just spam it. You can substitute mid-combo and there's no limit to how many subs you can use, which leads to a lot of these situations. In conclusion, Ultimate Ninja 2 has tons of content, a very good story mode and lots of fan service, but the battle system is still very mashy and uh, the roster is just terribly unbalanced. It's time to rank it and we're gonna give Ultimate Ninja 2 the first C rank in this show, making it the new best Naruto game of all time. Sorry, Uzumaki Chronicles, your victory was short-lived. But will the next game surpass this? Stay tuned, because the next game is coming right up. The vision of an open-world Naruto wasn't fully realized until 2007, and it wasn't Tomi or Bandai that fulfilled that vision, it was Ubisoft with Rise of a Ninja. With Rise of a Ninja, we finally saw a fully realized Konoha that you could walk around, race around the city, even climb walls and jump across buildings, complete with nameless NPCs and the characters we knew from the show, all tied up nicely with some RPG mechanics that would unlock new ways of exploring the place, like the ability to climb walls or walk on water. As time passed, you would unlock new combos and new Jutsu that would not only be useful in battle, but in exploration, platforming and puzzle solving. Rise of a Ninja felt like the first complete single player experience. Even though it had multiplayer, it didn't feel like that was the focus, like Clash of Ninja or the Ultimate Ninja series. It felt like a complete game with the story mode alone. And it's not like the multiplayer mode was lacking, in fact it was one of the first Naruto games, if not the first Naruto game, to feature online play. And you could do quick matches, create your own lobbies or even play ranked matches with a decent roster of characters. Problem is, this combat mode was definitely not designed for multiplayer. First of all, some characters can't even punch their opponents. And by that I mean hitboxes and hurtboxes just aren't there. I'm punching Akashi, look at that, why didn't that hit? Did he get Obito's Sharingan already? He's just phasing through my attacks. And for a game that has a list of combos for each character, most of these combos aren't even real combos. If you hold block, you can interrupt a lot of these, and it's got a good variety of combos, and each character's jutsu will play their own mini game, which is awesome fan service, but playing this game with another human is just mashing different attacks and keep substituting out of your opponent's combos until one of your health runs out. And out of the 12 characters, let's say you have four that would be viable. The rest are broken and not in a good way. Fortunately, these problems weren't so evident when playing single player. Outside of the Jutsu minigames, which were fun at first, but I can tell you how many times I've watched this Shadow Clone Jutsu animation because it's literally the best thing you could do for damage and it sort of disrupts the pace of battle too. But yeah, in short, I like the 
combat, I like the combo and jutsu variety, but I don't like it as a multiplayer game, since a lot of the characters aren't viable and it's a spam festival of substitution jutsu. But combat feels like such a small part of the game, which is why this game's story feels like a complete game on its own. It does a wonderful job of placing you right in the world of Naruto, right at the center of Konoha, and as soon as you boot up the game, it hits you with the anime's original soundtrack, and it even uses scenes from the anime itself as cutscenes, and sometimes mixed with gameplay portions or quick time events done in an expert way, like the moment Jiraiya throws Naruto into the pit and he has to summon Gamabunta to survive. These are the moments that make this game really shine, how it tells the Naruto story, crafting unique gameplay moments for what each scene requires, instead of making everything a random fight, which was the solution that most Naruto games had. The problem is when it starts not telling the Naruto story and instead asks you to stop some bandits from stealing potatoes. This game has its fair share of filler missions and filler on its own is not necessarily bad as we've talked about in Uzumaki Chronicles, but this filler in Rise of a Ninja is really bad. It's boring, it's uninspired and it's clearly used as padding to increase playtime. And it's usually during these missions that the game asks you to do some incredibly frustrating platforming puzzles which require a precision that the game doesn't have. Naruto's momentum feels off in this entire game. It takes Naruto a long time to reach top speed, but as soon as he jumps he speeds up, so the platforming, the movement feels very off in the open world. That said, it is the first time that it feels like we have Konoha and the surrounding areas as a complete space that we can explore. The game's graphics are gorgeous, I would totally still play a Naruto game looking like this nowadays, and the original anime cutscenes and soundtrack just make you feel like you are watching the Naruto show, it puts you right in that universe effortlessly. And the crafted minigames for every moment and every jutsu is a great attention to detail. However, the combat system is spammy, especially in multiplayer player, it's really not a great combat system, platforming feels bad, and uh, it's got lots of filler missions. But that's not enough to keep it from being our first B-rank game on our list. I would say it's barely a B though, I expect this to be a very low B-rank on the list by the end of this show, but for now it is gonna be our best Naruto game of all time. And these weren't the only open world Naruto games, Ultima Ninja 3 gave us more open Konoha to explore, and Broken Bond also expanded on that same world, but these three games that we talked about today were the first steps towards that open world dream game that never actually happened. And that's gonna do it for this episode. If you have any Naruto games you'd like me to tackle next, make sure to let me in the comments down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku and I'll see you next time. Bye.